Welcome everybody, this is another webinar in the Chamber Let's Talk series. Today we'll be covering health and well-being with MIND and Active Cheshire. We have Mike Henschel from MIND and also Roberta from Active Cheshire. Hayley will be joining us hopefully throughout further into the call. Uh, we will also be recording this webinar if you do wish to share this around your colleagues or watch a later date and I will be giving the link to all people who have attended this uh, webinar. That's everything for now. Thanks, Michael. Over to you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Um, let me just get the right screen on. Uh, we're not changing screens, Dom. Sorry. That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> it's not. Oh, there we go. There we go. Right. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I'm Mike Henschel. I'm from Mid Cheshire Mind, um, based over in Winsford. I run the outreach for businesses and communities. So, you have probably all heard of Mind, the national charity which um, does lots of the TV campaigns. It also does the um, adverts on the TV, etc. But a lot of the work is done at the coalface by the local mines. And these are small independent charities which are affiliated to MIND and use resources of MIND, but have to find their own funding and find their own support um, and, and work out their own services too. So um, the only one left in Cheshire is ours at Mid Cheshire MIND. And as you can see on the screen, we are based in Winsford. There's a little bungalow uh, in Winsford. And we run a drop-in service. There's four staff there. And the drop-in service is where we can uh, give support and, and advice and guidance. We're not trained counsellors, but we do have a, a counsellor on, on site if need to. Um, we also have a membership where we offer trips out, art and craft clubs, and mindfulness sessions, etc. Um, and as I said before, most of the fundraising is done through um, the um, sp uh, bids and, and sponsorship from corporate. We have a little uh, shop in the, t in the town centre uh, and that brings in most of the money for us. Um, but obviously, I mean to bid for your own funding, which is very competitive out there. So we, we rely on people's good, good heart and good nature, really. Uh, the Outreach is a fairly new new programme. I've been working for Mid Cheshire Mind since about August and I've developed the Outreach programme which really launched in October. Um, I try and raise awareness of mental health all across Cheshire. Um, I cover the four corners of Cheshire. I um, visit businesses and, and other organisations, community organisations. Uh, and I do things like talks, uh, workshops about mindfulness, life coaching, and what I call talking points. And the talking points are short one-to-one -one sessions uh, to just try and help people to get through, to get through their um, daily issues. So as I said, we are a, a local mind. Uh, there's 105 in England, and it is where most of the, the work is done. So this screen just shows us on the left-hand side of the screen of the, of the, the nice colour boxes of the National Mind uh, main impact for the um, last year. And I'm more interested in that little box on the right-hand side, which is our centre. Uh, and the centre itself has got the free staff, because I'm out and about, uh, and they have 100 people through the door on a weekly basis. And on average, uh, um, three one-to-one -one sessions with a mental health support worker. And that's somebody that might be in crisis, somebody that's really struggling at the moment. My outreach service, as you can see there, really quite quite astonishing um, stats that um, I've actually supported 474 people within a short space of time um, during December, um, October and December. So you can see there's a massive need in, in Cheshire for mental health support and um, to be honest, it's growing and growing, which you'll find out later. So what is mental health? Um, I usually do this talk, um, obviously live, and I ask people, anybody, anybody got mental health here? And hardly anybody puts a hand up or we're embarrassed to, but we've all got mental health. We all have mental health. It's the same as um, physical health. And I always describe it as the two pillars between a suspension bridge. One is physical health and one is mental health. And if either one of the, the pillars are um, wavering a little bit, that middle bridge is going to really struggle. And that middle bridge is your overall well-being. So it's really, really important that, that we look after this and, and we take care of it. So mental health is defined. Uh, you've 
all the buzzwords of air on the left hand side you've probably heard of loads and loads and it's probably a lot more that you, you might have heard of but the official definition is up there on the screen um, it's a state of well-being an uh, individual realizes his or her own abilities or sometimes inabilities to cope with normal everyday stresses and strains and it affects productivity it affects work life it affects home life and it can be anything from um, anxiety to schizophrenia to psychosis and it goes on and on and on so why is it so important to look after um, our mental health and, and why is it important to get mental health support well as you can see on the left hand side are some of the, the government stats and they always quote everybody's heard of the one in four people uh, are so struggling with mental health um, i think we'd actually challenge that and say it's probably 50 percent to 75 percent of, of the population uh, that are really struggling but and and in this current pandemic i would probably say it's a lot more than that it affects massively work uh, life balance it affects massively the um absent absentee level of employees i've worked with um, a very large uh, company over in nutsford and they had um, a massive absentee issue and they put some uh, talking points in place with some mindfulness and some workshops and now hopefully that's gradually improving people were working from home before all the, the pandemic and that was one of the things that they recognize it to, to look after their employees mental health so it is so important and the impact on the bottom line of having one employee off could be massive to that small business and and again it's it's usually the key people and it, and it can be key people um, from any level in the in the organization that, that might struggle so we need to look after everybody so hopefully some of those stats there on the left hand side um, might just make you think about about your own mental health and about your employees and your colleagues mental health and by the way uh, the biggest killer of men in the uk uh, between the age of 25 and 65 is suicide so again mental health is a massive massive thing that, that we we need to look after and we need to support so on the right hand side you can see that um, during this pandemic we've had to change quite a few things that we do so we, we can't run the, the drop-in we can't run this sort of cafe environment that, that we have been doing i can't do the talks live so we've had to diversify um, out of the four staff we've had two on furlough and myself and the manager are left behind and our workload workload has probably um, doubled or even trebled we have seen up to up to now we did some stats yesterday of 850 people that we've had one-to-one -one chats with that we've actually uh, supported directly just between March and May and this is before all the uh, lockdown is is released and people start going back so as you can see on there there's, there's, there's been at least two people in a suicide crisis per week last week I dealt with three um, people wanting to end their life and you can imagine the stress that that takes up so not, it's not only um, it's not only people who have suffered mental health from before I've also spoken to professionals who are now struggling um, so because they're having a massive influx of, of mental health issues um, from new clients etc so GPs are contacted as social prescribers social workers care workers we're having to do uh, check-in calls with people on a regular basis who are on the front line themselves dealing with the COVID that we're trying to trying to help and support. Now bear in mind we aren't trained counsellors we are um, support workers I've had 30 odd years experience of helping people um, but there's going to be lots more specialist help that's going to be needed and there's, there's hardly any services out there that are providing it things that we're having to deal with are massive fears people are scared to go out the front door scared to go shopping scared to, to 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 meet up with people so these need to be addressed it causes anxiety stress bereavement lots of people have lost people or known people that have lost the isolation factor has been a massive thing a lot of a lot of the people that we deal with uh, either live on their, live on their own anyway uh, and have to deal with that now because they can't come to the center etc 
or are in a family and they feel very isolated within a family because maybe the family members don't understand their mental health. Employment issues, obviously with the furlough and the returning to work and financial worries. So all these are, are very specialist areas that, that we are trying to um, basically put a plaster on until we can get the more specialist help that we want and we are applying for funding to do that. Um, new ways of, of working that we've developed and so we, we've started to do Zoom meetings. We have a WhatsApp group with uh, over 40 people on it at the moment and I've got my work phone on the side and there's 40 people chatting away now on there and it's a support group and a social group where uh, they can just go and have a chat. Um, we, we use in Facebook and Twitter. Uh, I've set up a Facebook group um, with a resources on it called the Quiet Zone where it's board and busting resources. Um, so there's recipes on there, there's art um, classes on there, there's everything you can, you can think of so that people can go on, find something and, and leave. And we can leave a comment, um, obviously, if you like it. Um, I, I do a lot of mindfulness and I've got my own Facebook group. So since the start of this um, uh, pandemic, I had a small group of about 20 people and out to 160 people just in this, in this one group. So you can see there's people are crying out for help. People are needing that help. So I want to talk to you um, a little bit now about um, my journey through mental health. And the reason why I'm doing this is because this could be you. This could be anybody listening to this, to this webinar right now. And I've done this, this talk to lots and lots of people. And um, there's something in it for everybody. There's something that some, everybody can take something away. So my own journey is that I, um, I spent 30 odd years um, working to help other people. So I um, have a, 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 a lots and lots and lots of things that have been going on. So on the screen there, uh, I call it my kit bag, my rucksack. So from a, from a young boy, I had a brain hemorrhage at five years old and was told I'd have a short life expectancy and not be able to work properly, walk properly. Um, from there, I think that I um, took that as a, as, a, as a challenge in some way, and I think my family did. So I uh, threw myself into life, not knowing what was around the corner. I, um, I, was, I, I worked, I had a regular job. I also did volunteering. So I, I volunteered as a um, special constable or a mountain rescue. I was also in the territorial army as a medic and uh, did lots of things there in, in, the, in the background. So I was working, I had, a, I had a hobby, and also I volunteered to help young people on turnaround programs for people like the NSPCC, um, the National Children's Homes, TOC H, all these kind of places. And I would often visit people uh, in, their, in their homes or in the prison or wherever, and we're trying to stop these young people from offending and getting worse. Um, could be quite stressful. I threatened to have my, my car burnt, I threatened to be to be stabbed, all these kind of things. But that, that's their fear coming out. So on the left hand side, you can see lots of the things that, that uh, had, a, had an impact on me. And this is just a very, very short list, a very, very short list. I did spend nine years uh, working in a high school as a, a welfare and behavior manager, uh, later on as a, as a, as a house, house manager head of house and um, the mental health support that students needed just grew astronomically. It was getting so, so busy. And again, with no training in that, it become harder and harder and I was getting no support either. And I think that's what probably sent me over the edge. The, the Manchester bombing happened and I had to support lots of young people during that time too. Um, and again, um, with very little help from that from the outside or from from the bosses on the right hand side you can see a lot of the personal things that have gone on uh, most of the family um were, were aging really so a lot of them had died of cancer um, growing up got not many friends to sort of turn to it's quite an old-fashioned upbringing i'd also got my mom who'd got alzheimer's and was um Towards my sort of big crash, she was she was dying in in the hospital. Um, I've had lots of health issues of TIA and hemiplegic migraines, which are very very similar to a stroke. Um, and a lot of this was brought on through stress. 
through perhaps doing that a little bit too much. So that's just a short list on there. And as you can imagine, this, this rucksack was just growing and growing and growing. And one day I came home and um, basically crashed. And my wife said to phone the doctor, my blood pressure was all over the place. He said he needed to take some time off. And, and that's what I did. Um, I ended up having about eight, eight months off, something like that. And was later diagnosed with PTSD, depression. Um, we were living in mum's house and because uh, mum was dying, we had to sell the house and we'd got no finances. We'd got no way of uh, supporting ourselves. So we actually went on the homeless, on the homeless register and I left work and because I couldn't cope like this, I was walking around with a hoodie on most of the time, with curtains closed, even on a glorious sunny day like today. Um, it was a really bad place. I did get some counselling, but some of it worked, some of it didn't. So I sat down one day and wrote down everything that was in my mind. And I ended up with nine pages, nine pages of, of things that were in my mind. Um, I did sink to the very depths of, the, of, of the darkness and, and considered, well, why, why do I need to be here anymore? Am I a burden to my family? Am I a burden to everybody else? They have been much better off without me, etc. And um, that was a very dark time, very, very dark time. But to pull myself through that, I knew that I had to do something um, a little bit different from a counselling. So I am a trained life coach. So a lot of my life coaching uh, kicked in. And what you see on the screen at the moment is actually um, on a placemat, which was in the placemat in, in, our, in our old house. Um, how much of this is actually mine to carry? How much of this was weighing me down as mine to carry? So this Saturday morning, I wrote down nine pages of A4 paper, what was stuff that was in my head. That exhausted me. I, I think I slept for about a day and a half afterwards. So the next stage was, I've got this rucksack full of stuff. My experience of, of adventure and mountaineering taught me that you don't take everything with you all the time. So I had to start emptying this rucksack. So how much of this now was mine to carry? And I ended up with one page of A4, which was actually mine to own and mine to deal with. So that's a massive difference from the nine pages. So and that, but that was a good technique that I use. So that's maybe something that you could consider if, if you're um, struggling or if you've got loads and loads of stuff on, how much of this is yours to actually own and carry? So the next stage, and bearing in mind this was, this was sort of going over several weeks, um, each stage was exhausting and, and quite heart-wrenching each time. So over the next few weeks, I had to come up with a plan to survive and thrive. Um, not just to get through this, but to, to keep me getting through. So I developed a survival kit, again, with the adventure kind of theme. And I've experimented with lots and lots of things, but these are about 10 things on the screen that, that lasted and that had the most impact. And I would probably challenge everybody listening to this webinar now that was one of those things on there that would help you, that you might require. Perhaps it's getting more sleep, certainly in a work environment, taking breaks. At the school, I would work from eight o'clock in the morning till about five o'clock at night with no break for nine years. It was a conveyor belt, conveyor belt, conveyor belt. So now I have to make sure I take breaks. And I'm sure that's most people in, in industry and in commerce and businesses. And bear in mind that I spent 25 years working in, in manufacturing and, and in different uh, business organizations. I even run a business myself as a, as a business coach. So I know exactly the pressures that some of you guys are under, but believe you me, if you crash, then who's gonna run that business then? So you really need to be looking after yourselves and your, and your, your colleagues and your employees. So there's lots of things on there, lots of tips on there that might help you. And there's lots, lots more behind it. So, so please don't be afraid to ask. So based on that, I come through it. I, I got through it. I got a job. We started to do things like couch to 5K with my wife. We, we ended up having a, um, going on the council house register kind of thing. And we got a little house. So we, we were set up there. 
But all through this, that's a picture of me there in Anglesey uh, on a holiday that I wasn't really expecting to go on. I didn't think I'd be able to be well enough to go, to go out the door. And all through this, I had two mantras, keep going forward and never give up. And those are stuck with me till, till today. Those are stuck with me even now. And I would suggest that find something that works for you. Find something that, that you can focus on, that no matter what's happening, you can do it. And I always say to people that in the morning before I get out of bed, I don't know what the day's going to be like ahead of me. I always say today is going to be a great day. So even if I wake up and I'm, and I'm still got an antidepressants, I've still got PTSD and I've still got depression, but I manage it now instead of it managing me. So I always say to myself in the morning, today is going to be a great day and I'm going to make the most of it. And then as soon as I get out of that, out of that house, out of that house, out of that bed, whatever, or go to work or, or start the, the normal everyday life, if it all goes down the pan, I've started with that positive attitude. And that positive attitude gets you through those slight things that happen to you day in, day out. And it, and it builds up your resilience on a, on a daily basis. So keep going forward and never, ever give up. That's me done, guys. Um, there's lots and lots more I could tell you. Lots and lots more uh, um, I've got to share. But obviously, um, there's a short time here. I do do workshops and, and talks all around, all around Cheshire. Um, but please look after yourselves. Think about your own mental health, your own mental well-being, that of your families and your employees and your colleagues. Um, we don't get these days back. We never get today back. So you, you must, you must take care, keep going forward and never give up. And that's it from me. There's my details on the screen. Um, as I say, please get in touch uh, as, as whenever you can. Thank you for listening and thanks for the opportunity to um, share and hopefully it's made a difference to somebody. Thanks very no, that's much. Great, Mike. I know I found it very useful. I'm sure Thank other you. people do as well. Uh, I have got some questions from people who are attending, but sure. if anybody's got any other questions, then please just put them into the Q&A and I will pick them up. Uh, are there any resources or helplines to help individuals or employers? There are, yes. Um, but there's the, the Mind, I can send these over afterwards, there's the Mind um, website. Uh, in Cheshire, there's also the, the COVID mental health um, telephone number, NHS telephone number that, that's been put out across, across the county. Um, and, and again, it depends what, what you want. If, if it's from a, a, an employer's point of view, there's lots of resources on, on the MIND website, the National MIND website. There's also um, Samaritans you could phone, there's Calm, lots and lots of places out there uh, that are still working and are still trying to support people. But by all means, if, if you're struggling, talk to us. I can always signpost you on to, to somewhere. Nope, that's perfect. Thank you. Uh, a quick question there. Any tips for working from home currently? Yes, routine has been a big thing. So, so um, to me, I have to take my dog for a walk first thing in the morning and that sort of gets me through the day. So think about routine. Make sure that you're still having breaks. It's really important. So if I'm, if I'm doing this now, I've scheduled in a half hour break afterwards when I'm meeting the family for a cup of tea and a, and a, and a cake as though you would be in a work environment. Make sure you've got that space where you can work. Um, a big thing is sleep. Lots of people are struggling with sleep and having really, really lucid dreams through these, through these um, coronavirus times. Um, but sleep is an important thing. And if you're tired during the daytime, take a nap. Um, and the big thing is, is don't beat yourself up. You're probably on half a workload, and some maybe, maybe not than you would normally be doing, or you might perhaps feel guilty of, of um, well, I should be doing this now, or I've got more time to do that. Take a few minutes to yourself. Take a bit of downtime, because you'll come back more productive. That's perfect. And then just on that, how many breaks should we have? Well, to be honest with you, every couple of hours, especially looking in front of the screen, every couple of hours, I will get up, have a wander around, have a stretch, um, go and watch some TV, um, get, a, get a, a cake or a biscuit or something. Every couple of hours, just take that, take that stint. If you're working on something really heavy, like, like preparing a, um, a bid for funding or 
preparing for this presentation, you might want to work it in a half an hour on, half an hour off. Um, but it's a regular, regular thing. And a, a sort of the government sort of gets, sets guidelines of every six hours you have a 20 minute break. Well, to be honest with you, I think that's a load of rubbish. I think you should have a break every couple of hours or so and give yourself that, that, set, that, that bit of a move around. Um, and I'm pretty sure we do in Parliament, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> got another question here yeah from diane are you interested in receiving new volunteers we are yes and we we do have a shop uh, a charity shop which is obviously closed but we are looking for volunteers especially from the business world and from from the outreach i'm looking for volunteers who can help me to market what we do there's only me at the moment covering the whole of cheshire and as you can see those numbers that i showed you before before um 2019 i've seen 400 odd people so, so if you if you can volunteer, get in touch. We'll we'll we'll, we'll get you signed up as DVS checks, all this kind of thing. But yeah, please, if you want to volunteer, we need help. Perfect. And then one final question: What to do if you are worried about a colleague who is quite isolated? Um, you can well if you feel that you can approach the uh, the colleague and see if they, they've got any support the main thing is is have they got support around them and they, even if they've got a family they might not feel as though they can talk to the family and especially if it's if it's young kids and, and wife etc they might need that external so see if they've got any support if they haven't it might be offering them well i'll contact mike for you from mind and he'll give you a call or something like that um, or find or offering them some some different help I think the most really good thing that's happened during this isolation time for me is I think I've spoke to more people um, than I would normally do um, and through more, more methods. So through Zoom, through WhatsApp and, and text. Um, and sometimes it might get a bit confusing. I'm on a computer one minute talking on the email or on a Zoom. I've got um, one phone doing a WhatsApp and, and text messaging. But it, it, it's, a, it's a case of reaching out to people and there's, there's something you can do for everybody. And even if it's just being there for two minutes listening to them, even if let them have a moan, let them have a whinge, let them get it off the chest because maybe they haven't got that opportunity. Yeah. Uh, I've got two more points or questions. Okay. There is, what is the youngest ages you deal with? The youngest age um, that my Cheshire mind deal with is 18. But we are looking at a pilot project to work from 16 year olds. But at the moment, it's 18 as, as a youngest. If you have got concerns about younger people, please still get in touch because we can re refer you on or we can recommend other people for you. Perfect. Then it's the point from Keel to saying that they are able to offer free intern support to, to 100 hours. And they're happy to talk. Yeah, that'd that. be great. That'd be excellent. Yes, please. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Right, thank you for that, Mike. That's thank you. amazing. I no find it very worries. useful. Thank and then you. I also, we've also got a talk from Roberta and Haley from Active Cheshire on the importance of uh, physical activities on the overall health and well-being, just to be maintaining good mental health. Let's over to you, Roberta and Haley. Okay, shall I stop share now? I'm sorry, Roberta. Shall I'll I stop? Yeah, over. if you stop sharing. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> so we'll take over now, Mike. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. I'll sit back now. <laughs> Okay, uh, so thank you very much for uh, your time and thank you, Mike, for a lovely introduction about the work, the amazing work that MIND locally does. Uh, it's, it has opened my mind, actually, and my eyes about uh, the difference between uh, uh, the local MIND and the, and the national MIND. So, uh, well done to you and your team for doing such a good work. Um, so, Hayley and I are here today to talk to you about uh, Active Cheshire. Um, uh, sadly, I can't see your faces, otherwise I would ask for a show of hand, but uh, um, we've been around for uh, over 30 years now. Uh, we are, oh, oh, hi Diane, I can see you raise a hand. <laughs> so can I ask everybody to raise a hand like Diane just did to show me if you've heard about us? No? Okay, I'll carry on then. Two, excellent. That's really good. Thank you very much. Three, fantastic. Thank you very much for joining in. So I'm glad you've heard about us because we are a very noisy team. So wherever we go, people can see us and hear us. <laughs> so Active Cheshire, we are a charity. We are mandated by Sport England uh, and our main objective is to embed physical activity in every aspect of our everyday life. 
Uh, we have an ambitious target, ambitious target, which is to decrease physical activity by 40% by 2020. 20, help me, Haley. I forgot. 15% by 2014. 2014. Okay. So 14. it is quite ambitious. At the moment, we're not doing too badly. At the moment, 65% of uh, the local uh, UK population meet the, uh, the, the national target, which is 150 minutes of uh, uh, activity that gets your heart beating per week. Um, and that means lots of, lots of things, which we'll chat about um, in a minute. But um, so as I said, we are the lead body for physical activity. We've won loads of awards. Our CEO is very well known. I'm sure everybody and um, in in the uh, in the sub region, and we've done an excellent work with many workplaces uh, in uh, in Cheshire, and want to do more. Um, so why are we talking about well-being? Um, so Active Cheshire has got a, a blueprint that has five pillars. One of them is called Active Minds, which is the one I'm leading on. Um, and uh, and the reason why we want to bring in uh, physical activity to support mental well-being is that. Physical activity is that pill that doesn't cost anything that will solve most problems. Um, mental health is a big problem. Um, Mike gave you a really good overview of what the situation is, how many people use their services. But we know that a, an adult on average will take up to a year to talk to a relative or a friend about the problem that they have with their mental health. So there's so many more people out there that are currently struggling, but they are maybe not knowing that they are struggling. Maybe they are they know that they are, but they are ashamed of the stigma that goes with it. So the more we can do to prevent people from struggling through being physically active, the better it is for all of us. So on the screen, you see some of the, the, the strongest figures. I think the most, the starting one is the eight million pounds cost for the UK economy, uh, which obviously is the cost on the NHS, but not, not only. You are, a lot of you will be employers uh, and uh, you will know that um, how much bad mental health affects your workforce. So they will perform less, they'll be more absent and so on. So it, it does include that cost as, as well. So mental health and mental illness, and I, I will actually steal um, Mike's analogy of the bridge. Um, mental, a lot of people will say, oh, I don't have mental health. Well, actually you do. Mental health is the same as your physical health. Um, you can have good or bad mental health in the same way as your physical health could be good or bad. So you need to look after it like you would like to look after your body. And the idea of having the two pillars that need to be both upright, otherwise your well-being falls apart, I think is brilliant. So we'll borrow it. Thank you, Mike, for that. So here we have some examples uh, of how physical activity will uh, positively affect your mental well-being. So if we're looking on, on the right side of the screen, uh, some of the benefits are really quite uh, obvious. Um, for example, a lot of us are str uh, struggling with sleep at the moment. Our routines are different. We're worried about our future. We're worried about our family, our health, our well-being, and so on. And sleep is the first, uh, it's the first part of our life that is affected by that. So if you go out and have your daily walk, enjoy the wonderful weather we actually gifted with at the moment, which is not very British, and, and go out and ensure that you do do that exercise every day, you will, notice that you will notice that your sleep quality will improve. And as a consequence, you will feel better uh, mentally as well as physically. It will improve your mood because if you're active, you will have a sense of satisfaction from achieving something. They say that the biggest step is to actually get out of the door, if you manage to get out the door, you have actually won the first battle. It's so easy to postpone, oh, I'll go out tomorrow, I'll go now, I'll do this, I'll rather do this instead. I need to do, and bust, get out and do it. Go, that, go and do that walk. Go out in the garden and, and do a bit of gardening. Go and, and cut the hedges or cut the grass. All of that counts as physical activity. Don't postpone it. And you will find that once you've done your exercise, your mood will be lifted. You'll feel better about yourself and it will reduce your anxiety as well because uh, there's nothing worse than sitting there and scrolling through social media and watching the news over and over again, reading the news over and over again. All of the overload of information will only make you feel low and, and decrease your mood. So switch your TV off, put away your social media and go on that walk, on that run or whatever exercise. Or oh, you can actually play golf these days as well, so you can do that as well. 
So the benefits of physical activity is a, an overall benefits. They, they are um, great for obviously your cardiovascular functions, they improve um, the diabetes, the, le the decreased level of diabetes, but they also are proven to, de uh, to decrease depression by up to, to 30%. So who here, and I, I'm gonna have another ra uh, raise of hands if you don't mind, who here would prefer to go for a walk every day than take antidepressants? Yeah, exactly. It's an easy win, isn't it? It's a win of all, on all of us. We live, we're blessed to live in an amazing, uh, um, in Cheshire with beautiful landscapes and countrysides. Um, we, are, we have so many uh, opportunities to go out and get out and be active. So much easier than sticking to tablets. <laughs> I think it's a, it's a win-win situation. So in terms of the actual effects that physical activity and exercise have on the brain, um, it, it is uh, proven that scientifically that it does increase brain chemicals, endorphins, serotines, dopamines, and so on. It increases your appetite, your sleep cycle that like I mentioned. So all of these, are, as I said, uh, many, many benefits of being active regularly. So what um, <clears throat> Um, uh, Mike mentioned about uh, um, uh, resilience and he mentioned about mindfulness. Mindfulness uh, is a great way of uh, managing your stress, man managing um, uh, coping with, uh, in this case, P uh, PTSD and, and, other, and other mental health problems. Um, and uh, we, we learn that, we learn that skill. Um, if, you, if you go on a walk and you enjoy, um, actually somebody gave, uh, gave me a quote today from uh, uh, Eminem who said that once he actually stopped taking drugs, he learned to look at leaves and he now realized that uh, uh, there are so many leaves and he misses he, how much is missed out of life just by looking at leaves. And that's just a form of mindfulness, observing what's around you, uh, observing nature, observing the animals, looking out of the window and seeing birds that you had never noticed before and how they fly around you. So they're amazing gifts that are given to us and they're absolutely free. And some of the things Active Cheshire do for you are helping you to become more active in a simple way without spending money for a gym membership or without buying the latest kit. We, have, uh, we, we give some of our clients beach balls, for example, that are using meetings to help uh, the delegates be active at playing, you know, throwing the beach ball across the board, for example. We offer also blood testing. So we go into businesses and we help people um, uh, make ensure that, that their staff are healthy in many ways. So this presentation is now stopped working. Okay, <laughs> so I'm just going to finish uh, briefly on this bit and just say, I think along the lines of what Mike just said, um, look after yourself, okay, you need to uh, look after your body as well as your mind, and the, the two of them go alongside, ensure your body is healthy, ensure keeps, you keep active, you eat well, you sleep well, and only in that case your mind will also be feeling better. Um, so look up, you know, I think that's a nice one, you cannot pour from an empty cup. So don't allow yourself to be drained in, uh, emotionally and, uh, and physically because you won't be able to carry on um, much further without <laughs> filling up your cup again with energy. Well, so thank you, Roberta. That's a really nice lead into um, the mental health and physical activity strand of our blueprint. So within Active Cheshire, we have five strands of our blueprint, one of which is mine, where you've just heard from Roberta. We also have our activator strand, our active design strand, and then we also have an active kids and an active workplace um, strand. Um, so I just thought I'd take the opportunity to speak to a couple of you about active workplace, given the current circumstances, some of the things that we can either help or support with while we're in this current situation, but also a little bit further down the line when we're re-emerging and we're looking at these approaches to get back into the office and also just to help with the the overall health and well-being of our of our teams um, and the people around us. So those that are physically active in um, their day-to-day -day lives are reported, and especially within the workplace, are reported to have 20% higher concentration levels. They are 22% higher um, for finishing their work on time, 25% higher for working without unscheduled breaks, and 41% higher for feeling motivated to do their work. 
So it's just um, straight away by offering people that flexibility to be more physically active, enjoy their work that they're doing, that slightly more fluid approach that Mike, Mike was touching upon before about, you know, taking lots of breaks and getting away from the screen and getting up and getting moving. All of those things have pos positive benefits that come back on workplaces, on employers, um, because staff are more productive, they're more, they can concentrate better, they can turn work around, they're working at a higher quality. Um, and employers themselves actually have reported a 25% reduction in absenteeism and 16% reduction in staff turnover. So if we were in a normal session, I'd start trying to get you to guess with me or have a little bit of a prediction how much people think it actually costs to recruit a member of the team, but it's a little bit hard to do that in, in the, this kind of forum, so I'll just go with it. It is around 30K for us to recruit a single person within a team. Once you've thought about bringing in um, so a recruitment agency, if that's what you use, if you're looking at uh, manager's times to conduct interviews, once you're training somebody up and getting somebody through their probation period that might be a well-paid member of the team, on average in the UK, it can cost around 30,000. So that's a huge saving if we can reduce that turnover because people are happier um, in their work-life um, balance, really. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to touch upon today, if Roberta doesn't mind just ticking over for me, please. Thank you, was just some of the things and ways that we can help. So when we're actually working with workplaces, there's different things that we can do. We've done active walking routes. So that's ways that can be shorter routes. So they can be things so that we're getting active during meetings, having walking one-to-ones different methods and tips and, and hints as to how we can record those meetings still because, you know, it's difficult. They're a formal meeting. We're used to the process where we have to sit down and do those, but there's a way that we can walk around with a notebook, uh, um, a little notebook or we can record the meeting as we're walking and then we can make the notes afterwards when we get back to the office, but at least we're getting out, we're getting some fresh air. So we can do shorter routes. Um, we've also done some longer routes with workplaces that people will use on their breaks if they're lucky or they'll have walking groups at the start or the end of the day if they don't have that flexibility to, to do it middle of the day. We've generated posters that will hopefully help with people um, during the working day. Just little reminders to say to people, oh, did you know that if you don't hop into your car to go across to the co-op to get your sandwich, you'll do X number of steps, um, which is the Mars bar that you're probably going to buy when you go over there as well. So you know, just little posters and things like that, a little, a little note by the lift saying, if you can, have you, have you used the stairs today? Uh, just little prompts that almost actually make people feel a little bit guilty and they're like, okay, maybe I should actually uh, use the stairs. Um, you can see uh, somebody that's completed some of our activator training. So there's a picture there with them, um, one of the members of our team and um, Cliff, who was from Warrington's Own Buses. He did our activators training. He absolutely loved it. He's had all the, all the bus drivers getting up and down in between breaks, walking to different buses. They all despise him because he's like, they call him Mr. Motivator now and he annoys them all, but he's just doing fab stuff with it. And he's thinking of really creative, innovative ways that it's, it's re related to his workplace specifically to get people more active. And that's what we're all about is trying to make it as bespoke as possible because every workplace is different. And you know, Roberta touched up on, we have places with beach balls. So we work with call centers where we know it's very difficult. People can't get up and take those breaks like they would normally because they need to be on their headset and they need to be at their screen. And that's very difficult to get that flexibility, but they stand up and they play a game with their beach ball in between where they can and just, just little ways or, or however we can to sort of break the day up and get people up and moving. Um, and then we've had a few more sort of initiatives more recently while we've been going through the current situation and one of them is our active hour so we're trying to promote other people and if there's any organizations on here today that would love to get on board with our active hour we'd love to see you there so feel free to hashtag active hour anytime from one till two doing some form of activity for the day uh, we've started to attach themes to ours and if you see roberta's um at twitter handle at the end oh that's <laughs> But he likes to make an appearance at some point during a call, the uh, curses of working from home, sorry folks. Um, if you get a chance to follow Roberta's handle, she's done some really creative, really fun um, active hours whilst, whilst we've been in this situation. It's just a chance to feel connected with the rest of the team, have a bit of a laugh, but at the same time it's getting people up and moving. So um, just one of the things that we wanted to offer, we wanted to let you know about some upcoming events that we've got available. 
Um, so Roberta will touch up on some of those. And I think, is that one of your active hours there on show? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, so I'll let Roberta touch up on those in a sec, but down at the bottom there, um, we have been sending out workplace support packages to people, so it's links to different, um, <laughs> it's gone, links to different uh, things that are available, uh, different resource packs, um, a few of our, the little posters that we would generally include printed in like welcome boxes, but we're, you know, we're just sending them out to people so they can put them on their, their staff intranets. Um, so I'm more than happy to share those with anybody that's on here today. If they want to drop me an email, I'll send you that little resource pack with essay links to different places, ideas to get active, the benefits, um, little prompts for staff, and we'll help wherever we possibly can. Um, and also if people did actually want to discuss uh, potentially the pledge or any re-emerging sort of themes when we start heading back into the office, then again, my email's at the bottom, so feel free to drop me, drop me a line and I'll let Roberta touch up on some of our events coming up. Yeah, there were a couple of things I wanted to mention to you if, you, if you're interested. So we are leading on the Mental Health in Sport and Physical Activity Network in Cheshire and Warrington. Uh, this is a, an actual national, an, a national mind initiative that covers uh, um, five, the five key regions in the country. Uh, we have done our launch at the end of April and our next event is on the 22nd of May. Um, and um, on that occasion, we're gonna, we, we called it over to you because we realized in the first one, we got, uh, we, we spoke too much and didn't allow anyone to say anything. So uh, we're now turning it round. So we, we're going to have speakers that are going to tell us their story of how physical activity and sport have help, are helping them manage their mental health. So we're going from professional footballer to somebody who's just started doing a park, park run every Saturday and that's helped them deal with anxiety and depression. Um, and the other event that I'm working on again in a, a virtual for now is the menopause walks. Um, so we're going to, we started doing a menopause talk last, uh, last week and next month we're going to try and attempt a virtual walk. So watch this space for that. Um, I put here my Twitter handle. That's the easiest way to find out what we're up to really. Um, there's my email address if you want to get hold of me, if you want to have that conversation. Obviously we have time for questions here uh, as well. Um, and uh, on top of this, obviously, uh, there, um, I will offer mental health first aid uh, courses. This is the two-day adult course, which is now going to be made available as a virtual training over today. So that's part of the package that we'll be offering uh, and a series of, uh, uh, of other intervention. Um, I don't have any clinical background. So all of my, um, yeah, it's all about my lived experience, my research, my work with the NHS in education, and now in, this, in, this, in the charity sector. So it's bringing together my life experience and my research to hopefully share the message of the benefits of physical activity on mental health. And yes, that is a little video I made about, <laughs> I was being a bit lazy, but I, we were doing fit exercises. So I thought that was a bit funny with a little silly socks. And nice then, socks. Yeah. <laughs> So I think we can open for questions now, I think, unless Hayley wants to add something else. No, I'm good for questions. That's perfect. Thank you both for that.